Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 as usual and today we'll be doing a review on a tier 6 Chinese medium tank, the Type 58. Now this vehicle is really similar to a Soviet vehicle in the game which is the T-34-85 and actually the way that the Type 58 came into being is because the Soviet Union shipped these T-34-85 tanks to China because they were like allied. In the game, the Type 58 doesn't only look very similar to its Soviet twin, but it actually plays out quite similarly as well. But there are some uh, distinct advantages and also disadvantages compared to the Soviet vehicle. So we'll compare them in the course of this video. I'll try to keep this review a bit shorter as it's only a tier 6 tank. So let's quickly go over the tech tree of this Type 58 tank. Now we can see that it actually leads up into two different tier 10 tech tree branches which is first of all the heavy tank line leading up to the 113 and then the medium tank line leading up to the 121. Now the question that might be on your mind when you're watching this video, at least it was on my mind when I was uh, grinding out to get this vehicle, was I really wanted to get the 121. So I was unsure whether to get the 5916 and go through the light tanks to reach the WZ120 or to get the Type 58 and go through medium tanks. And basically the decision and the choice you make comes down to two factors. Now the first one is just personal preference. Do you like playing medium or light tanks more? Now I actually like playing medium tanks more and in retrospect I probably would have been better off going down the medium tank line. But I know there are plenty of people out there who really enjoy high tier light tanks and if that's something for you definitely go down the light tank branch. These are amazing vehicles except for the 5916 which is not that great. Uh, I also made a review on the WZ132 in case you're interested in that. But uh, if you feel like light tanks are not quite your strength then going for the T-34-2 and on your way picking up a Type 58 would not be a bad decision. And although I haven't played the T-34-1 or the T-34-2 yet, except for on test servers, I kind of feel like they are both pretty strong tanks in their respective tiers, especially the T-34-1. Now, you might be asking, what is the other, other factor here? And the other factor is whether you want to unlock the 113 eventually, because in that case, it is actually advantageous to go for the Type 58 rather than the 5916, because if you want to research the 121 and the 113, then this will allow you to split up a tier later, which will save you quite a bunch of experience, games and time. The Type 58 actually is not a bad tank, but it is not a good tank either. Now, one of the main strengths of the Type 58 is that it's a really painless stock grind. Basically, when you buy this tank in the stock configuration, it is almost just as good as when you fully equipped it. The best modules of this vehicle do not really improve its performance all that significantly. Still, I want to give you my recommendations on the order in which you should research stuff on this vehicle. Now, the stock gun is almost as good as uh, the top gun only lacking some penetration compared to it. So we are actually quite fine just playing with a stock gun for the time being. I would actually first of all get the tracks, although I didn't do that, but researching the tracks will give this vehicle quite a nice uh, boost in mobility, which is one of the main strengths of a Type 58. So unlocking the tracks will give you better terrain resistance and traverse speed. After that, you want to get the better turret, which actually doesn't help you that much except for boosting your view range. Armor stays exactly the same though, but the gun actually has got slightly better attributes than your stock gun and that's why researching the top 85mm will be quite nice. And uh, after that, get the radio to uh, help you communicate with your team while you're doing medium tank stuff like flanking and pushing flanks. And last of all, get the engine. Now the top engine only has 20 horsepower more 
than the stock engine, so you might be thinking, well, why waste all the experience on it? But as a matter of fact, you want to get this engine, provided that you want to research the T34-1, because otherwise you will have to grind out the experience for this engine using the stock engine on the T34-1, which will not be fun. So I recommend you to get this engine as long as you want to play the T34-1 as well. So let us quickly have a look at the stats of this vehicle compared to its Soviet brother. On the left side, we've got the T34-85, the Soviet model, while on the right side, we've got the Chinese Type 58. And at the beginning, we can see that uh, the Type 58 gets a very standard amount of 750 hit points, which will generally allow you to take between three and four hits, possibly six hits, and some situations depending on what gun is firing at you. The speed limit is very impressive at 55 kilometers an hour. That is very fast uh, for a medium tank. And the armor is not that great. Now, it gets exactly the same armor as, as the Soviet vehicle, and it uses the hull of the tier five T-34. So your frontal armor, as well as sides and rear is very underwhelming. In probably like nine out of 10 shots you take to your hull, they will penetrate, probably even more than that. And uh, your turret armor is actually does not look that bad. You've at least got 90 millimeters at the front, which is pretty sturdy, and your turret front will be able to pull off some bounce. It is a kind of a tricky target to penetrate, at least for tier six guns. Still, I would not, I would not ever rely on your armor in this vehicle, especially not the hull, but also the turret armor. But if you are engaging a, a Type 58 or a T-34-85, then always try to uh, get shots at their hull rather than the turret, because the front of a turret can be kind of, it can be like a 50-50 thing, whether you penetrate or not. And why take a chance when you can just as well slice through uh, 45 millimeters of armor very easily? Now, its engine is actually quite a bit less powerful than uh, the Soviet, than the Soviet tank. So, as a consequence, you lose out quite a bit on the power to weight ratio, almost two horsepower per ton worse than the Soviet model. However, you get significant, quite significantly better traverse speed at 42 degrees per second. That is very impressive. And the terrain resistance is actually quite a bit better than on the Soviet tank. So overall, that means that the Type 58 actually gets better maneuverability than a Soviet vehicle. The guns are pretty solid performing on both of these tanks. The Chinese vehicle gets slightly worse alpha damage and worse penetration, but having a higher rate of fire of two rounds a minute more, which is very significant, it gets better damage per minute. The reload time is one second quicker. Now the accuracy is slightly worse and the aiming time is the same. In the end, I would still prefer the Soviet gun because it gets better raw power stats, but that doesn't mean that the Chinese gun is no good. Actually, this is still a very, very strong gun on a tier six tank, quite a bit better than a lot of other tier six vehicles get. But when you are engaging other tier six medium tanks, you have to be careful because a lot of the time their reload will beat yours. For example, uh, the American tier six mediums or a Cromwell or even a German tier six tank using the 7.5 Konish gun. So you will have to try to dictate the pace of the combat in a way that you trade shots one for one and not get shot twice for each shot you put into your enemies. So basically we can say that comparing these two tanks, it, when you get the Chinese vehicle, you lose some gun performance, but gain, you, you lose some raw stats on the gun, but you gain better rate of fire and better maneuverability. Now, one very important fact that I should also point out that the Type 58, being Chinese, gets abysmal gun depression of five degrees. Now, that is not as bad as some other Soviet vehicles, but it definitely is very underwhelming and it will definitely inhibit you from using ridgelines effectively, going hull down and using that, well, somewhat trollish turret armor that you do have uh, effectively. And the T-34-85 
gets seven degrees of gun repression, which is two degrees more. In fact, that's a lot. So really in the end, I would go with the T34-85 being the better vehicle out of the two, but the Type 58 can still hold its own as long as it does not have to fight over undulations and can just perform uh, smoothly on even terrain. Now, for crew skills, I would probably say that getting repairs on your entire crew as a first skill would be really useful. Maybe six cents to the commander rather than repairs. After getting repairs on your entire crew, uh, get brothers in arms on the entire crew. Then, separate skills for the commander. Now, I you probably will not get uh, get your crews this far driving the Type 58, but I mean, maybe this tank is a keeper for you and you want to have an excellent crew on it, I do not know. Or maybe you just want to know which crew skills to train as you progress towards the 121 or the 113, and these are pretty similar. So as I said, repairs, brothers and arms of the entire crew is really good. Then on the commander, probably even instead of repairs, as a first skill gets six cents. Then brothers and arms, after that, uh, you should then pick up repairs and otherwise recon would probably be a good idea although I would maybe even go with jack of all trades as this tank is kind of squishy has got pretty thin armor and getting your entire crew obliterated by these Russian 122 millimeter guns is actually quite a big is actually kind of quite a serious issue on this tank so jack of all trades would be a good idea the gunner again repairs then brothers and arms after that just get snapshot you can't really go wrong with that especially because this tank is kind of a bit of a maneuverable flanking kind of vehicle and you should try to outmaneuver uh, your enemies so snapshot would really be a good idea for the driver again repairs brothers and arms and then you could go for off-road driving to further enhance your maneuverability although i would just stick with smooth ride and then eventually even controlled impact might not be a bad idea if you find that you get yourself into a lot of situations where you're on a one-on-one -on -one with enemy tier 6 medium tanks because those are situations in which your weight will come in handy for ramming and then second to last the radio operator brothers and arms repairs and then situational awareness, you cannot go wrong with that. And for the loader, again, repairs, brothers in arms, and then safe storage, and well, maybe adrenaline rush, but it will not really be that useful on this vehicle, probably. So, for equipment, if you feel like you want to mount equipment in this tank, I cannot really recommend it because it's only tier six and spending this amount of credits for a tier six vehicle, is not really that good of an idea in my opinion but you I mean if you feel like doing it i would go for improved vents and the tank gun rammer definitely then as a last piece of equipment probably the gun lane drive because the 2.3 second aiming time of this gun although it is not bad because you kind of try to play this tank in a kind of a hit and run style having better aiming time would be really useful or if you do not want enhanced uh the enhanced gun lane drive if you do not want the GLD, then maybe coated optics is the way to go for you because enhanced view range on one of these flankers is always nice to have. So I've got one pretty nice gameplay lined up for you guys. So we'll head out to the battlefield and then see you there in a second. So Enskit is, and this is a very nice, well, a nice match. I'll put it like that. There are a lot of tier sixes uh, in this game. A few tier fours, no tier, one tier five tank very weird matchmaking and i'm trying to hit this cromwell here but my aim's just terrible I, and i didn't really manage to get my my uh set of my sights on him i do get a shot at the turret of that kv85 and the second one you can see the rate of fire is pretty nice on this vehicle considering that its alpha damage is 160 on average uh, but the accuracy at 0.38 is mediocre. I mean, it is pretty good for a tier 6 medium tank. It is kind of, I'll say it's average for a tier 6 medium tank. But, you know, if you're used to playing 
other vehicles, like maybe higher tier vehicles, this takes some getting used to. So there's an SU-100 here and somebody told me you can shoot through walls but apparently you can't. So I do not pick up a kill there. Um, and I mess up my shot against the Hellcat again. But set, this is the first shot I actually hit in this game. And you can see the damage is actually pretty, uh, pretty good in a tier 6 match. And yeah, my aim's just pretty bad this game at the moment. The Hellcat goes down, and um, this game's been pretty bloody so far. 45 is the score, and I kind of rushed my shot there, didn't want to take return fire by the, the 88, and I'm kind of in a, in a pretty tense situation here. 88 fires and does not hit me, so that gives me time to take a shot at this Cupolo. You can see, if you fully aim your shot, you can actually quite reliably hit a weak spot like that cupola there and he is not aiming at me so my set and my third shot also goes in picking me up my first kill and you can see again the rate of fire is actually not too bad so um also as you can see the this tank this is basically the same tank as i'm driving and shooting at here and the whole armor is just really pathetic so i finish him off with another three shots and now there's a panzer 38 martyr there um, shot was not completely aimed, so um, it does not hit, and Martyr is retreating, so now he gets taken up by our ally, and this game still doesn't look like we're going to win it, the score is 8 to 10. Now I'm pushing forwards here, though, because this 88 is really out of position back there, and uh, with that tank's top speed, he's not coming back here anytime soon. So I've got all time in the world to, uh, to try to clean up some kills over here. And we know that there's an SU-85 somewhere around here. We saw him just a few seconds ago. Sure enough, there he is. And he messes up his shot, which allows us to put a pretty nice hit into him. If we got lucky, we would be able to two-shot this vehicle. Obviously, we do not get lucky. So I try to ram him here, but he gets wise to it and drives backwards. So I finish him up with the third shot. Third kill of the game, and I'm trying to uh, connect a shot into this. Ah, yeah, we managed it. I actually didn't do 405 damage there, but ARL shot him as well. And we clean up the kill. Fourth kill. So, actually, things started going quite well now, and actually, we kind of turned the game around. Um, enemy teams down two tanks now. Things look pretty good, and let's see if we can still mop up some damage before this this game ends I'm just gonna speed it up a bit because not that interesting uh, seeing me drive around but you can see that this tank the thing is the power to weight ratio is not amazing right tank yeah you can kind of uh, it once it gets up to speed the top speed limit is actually not too bad uh, I know that the kv2 is fired so that's why I can be quite uh, quite aggressive here in a pickup the kill so uh, what I was just about to say is that once this tank gets up to speed, it is actually pretty nimble. It's got very good traverse speed, but for power to weight ratio, it is pretty good, but it is not off the charts, put it like that. So, um, pretty nice game here, actually, although it started off being kind of a bit of a struggle, you know, of uh, me uh, whiffing quite a few shots and so on, but I actually uh, got my act together and... Uh, I think I could show off the strengths of this vehicle, being able to maneuver through through the the train station or the I don't know the 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 depot over there, I guess, and uh, out maneuvering or maneuvering around my enemies and being able to put the DPM of this vehicle, which is actually pretty nice to good use. So let's check out the post game stats of this game, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on this vehicle and whether I'd recommend it or not. So, we picked up 38,000 credits, actually more like 39,000 credits, 3.5k experience, and an ace tanker medal, along with all this stuff here. So, quite a nice result there, 1,181 experience. I really wasn't expecting that amount of base experience for this game. I mean, it was a 
pretty good, but like that's a pretty damn nice amount of experience. Uh, and also 1,900 damage dealt. That is a lot in a tier 6 tank actually, so that's pretty nice. And that was only possible because of our good damage per minute and rate of fire which allowed us to pump out 27 shots of which only 19 hit 15 penned 15 is actually a pretty acceptable penetration rate um in like in a battle where we were top tier considering that for example we were hitting the top of that uh kv85's turret at the beginning of the match and uh we received six hits. Actually, surprisingly, only three of those penetrated. That is really surprising because that is. This would say that statistically speaking, fifty percent of the shots we received in this tank bounce. But I really cannot confirm that at all. It really does feel like ninety percent of the shots you receive will pen, at least definitely to the hole. So do not rely on your armor. I cannot emphasize that enough. Um, then. We spotted four vehicles, that's actually uh, not that uncommon in this vehicle, it gets better view range than uh, the Soviet tier 6 medium tank and uh, is pretty mobile so you can definitely pull off the spots in this vehicle. I am not saying this is a scout, it definitely isn't, but you know the occasional spot is definitely possible. The maintenance costs aren't too high in this vehicle either, I mean we didn't lose too much health. But as you can see, we were able to keep 32,000 credits. That's the result I would accept in any of my tier 8 premium tanks. So that is pretty good too. So all in all, uh, my verdict of a Type 58, well, I do not really like the vehicle that much. I mean, it's all right, I guess. It's, it's not too bad of a grind, but it's definitely not going to become one of my favorite vehicles. And it's definitely not a keeper. And the reason for that is because it's one of these tanks that is, does not excel in any one category. It is very, very distinctly average in every respect. But it's but there are lots of vehicles like that which are really good, like the M48 Patton, for example, or the STB1. But the the Type 58 just kind of it doesn't feel average. It just feels kind of mediocre in every respect, and. It's, as I said, it's not painful to play, but I do not get this feeling like, yes, finally I can have a game in my Type 58. I do not feel that way. It's kind of, I always feel like, oh, I have to play the Type 58 to progress up the tech tree. It's that kind of a feeling, if you know what I mean. So, in my final rating, I, I would give the Type 58 5 out of 10 points. So, a distinctly average tank, uh, just make sure to use your DPM. And as I said, it is quite a painless grind, but it is definitely, for me at least, not a huge amount of fun. Maybe if one thing, if I could change one thing about this vehicle, it would be the, like the hull armor. If the hull armor was better, like I'm thinking uh, Sherman Jumbo better, then this tank would be amazing. Like it would, it would, could be a really good, really fun tank. But the way it is. And the thing is, with the gun depression, the, like, the role this tank could play is it could play play the role of a versatile flanking vehicle that just traverses the map and outmaneuvers its enemies. But its possibilities in this respect are really limited by the fact that it only gets 5 degrees of gun depression. And you basically have to steer clear of any kind of undulation or hill. And you cannot... In many situations, you cannot utilize your pretty robust turret, actually, because you just are not able to go hold down. So, uh, I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions or uh, I don't want to ask me anything, just make sure to uh, post them in the comments. I'll definitely read through all of them. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.